When the Marvels became the lowest grossing movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, it was pretty much public at that point that there is something wrong with the current state of the MCU. But even despite all this, there are some people who still won't admit what the actual problem is with the current state of the MCU. And while some people acknowledge that there's been issues with storytelling in recent years, other people kind of want to double and triple down on what's the problem. And that's where I'm getting this story out right now, where one of the stars of the Marvel is basically saying that she wants to see more of the diversity stuff being shoehorned into future MCU movies because that, that's what she personally likes. Never mind the fact that that really hasn't been doing too well for them in recent years. The Marvel star Tayona Perry shared her thoughts on being part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe at a time when the franchise is constantly expanding its diverse cast of characters and actors. In the last few years, the MCU has gained equal amounts of praise and backlash over the diversifying of its characters, including various characters being gender or race swapped from their original comic book appearances. And that's kind of the problem that a lot of people have with this sort of thing. It's not necessarily that you have various groups being represented in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because you can look at the first MCU movie today. Uh, you have a black guy playing War Machine. Well, he wasn't War Machine at that point, but still, he became War Machine and became a prominent member of the Avengers, but no one had a problem with the black guy having a lead role in that movie. They only had a problem when you're deliberately race and gender swapping characters in order to push an agenda. Now, I'm not saying race and gender swaps have never existed within the MCU until recent years, but I am saying it has been a primary focus. And when that's your focus of the movie, everything else, including story, kind of takes a back burner. And that's something that I think audiences can feel, which is why many of them have checked out. But still, a lot of people insist that this is the right path that they're on and they should continue with it. In an interview with IGN, Perrys, who plays Monica Rambeau, expressed her thankfulness for being part of the MCU story at a time when superheroes can look like any of us. <laughs> okay, first of all, this isn't a new thing because a lot of these characters within the MCU are decades old. So to imply that this is the first time that we have comic book characters who represent these various groups is completely dishonest. And that was kind of what I was saying just a little bit ago because... If you want to have representation within the MCU, you can do that without gender and race swapping characters, but that's not what they want to do. Because if you just happen to have a black person in the movie, no one cares, but you can't virtue signal about that either. And that's not what they're trying to do. They're trying to virtue signal and make sure people know we have black characters in this movie. So you race swap a character, then it becomes obvious that having a black person play that role was a deliberate choice as opposed to just trying to follow the source material. And that's what kind of turns off a lot of people in the audience, especially the comic book fans. Now, if I'm going to be fair, a lot of people who are fans of the MCU aren't necessarily fans of the comic books. There is some overlap there for sure. But a lot of people who are fans of the Marvel movies or just fans of the Marvel movies. And even then, in recent years, they've been kind of turned away because, like I was saying, when you're prioritizing checking boxes above all else, well, then a lot of the elements within the story kind of takes a back burner. And when you do that, people can kind of see that things just aren't what they used to be. But still, there's people who are insistent, like uh, Paris here, saying that, no, you actually need to kind of do this thing because younger generations need to be able to see this type of representation as if it hasn't been done before. I'm so grateful for that. I'm excited that my child, this whole generation of younger people and also adults, I actually needed this sort of content in college. Right now in the MCU, in this superhero space, it has opened up so much to be more diverse and show that superheroes can look like any of us. And I'm not saying there's no market for this whatsoever, but you have to understand, pre-Endgame, most of the viewership of Marvel movies were men. So I think they were looking at the numbers and be like, well, women are a huge segment of the population. Let's try to appeal to them. And I think they've even said as much. So they started making it more female heavy. Kevin Feige even said he wants to have as many female characters as male characters within the MCU. Okay, well, we can see that that's not turning out too well. And just from the simple fact that men and women are different, and I know that's controversial to say right now, but that's just a simple fact that men and women are different and they like different genre movies for different reasons. Uh, there's no secret that women tend to gravitate towards rom-coms. Men tend to gravitate towards action movies. Uh, that's not to say there's no overlap whatsoever, 
But this isn't the way to find that overlap by just trying to basically take male characters and just make them female. And I'm not saying that's necessarily what they did in the Marvels, but if you look at their personalities and everything like that, they're pretty much just act like men, or at least that's the view of the strong empowered woman when it comes to Marvel movies is basically just get masculine characteristics, but have a woman play them. And then they call that a strong empowered woman. But if assuming that Marvel and Disney are hundred percent right, when it comes to how people view their movies, as in you have to be able to, identify with the character in order to enjoy the movie well then from a business standpoint it doesn't make sense to market your movie as women that are also minorities because then by that logic you're only going to appeal to a minority segment of the population and i can see that in the final results because you can look at the rotten tomato audience score for this and 66 percent isn't terrible for an audience score, but it's still not fantastic. Critics didn't like this either, but still I will give it credit for being in the positive range, even if it's just slightly in the positive range. And that's really the whole issue with this, because you look at the box office results and it just tanked, but the people who watch the movie tend to like it. Okay. So what does that tell you? Well, first of all, they're spending too much on these movies. And if you're going to spend as much on these movies as they currently are, well, then you try to appeal to a large segment of the population. And I know that might be a, a curse word these days, but you might have to try to appeal to white men if that's the case, because they're the largest segment of the population. Now, does that mean you have to put white men in it for every role? No, because we saw in the early phases of the MCU, it didn't necessarily work that way, but still people enjoyed those movies. Uh, really the goal here is to just, try to tell good stories because if you tell good stories then it doesn't matter what characters in the movie that people will like it like look at in the past uh wakanda forever did pretty well and that was just a heavy black movie so what you can do something like that uh, but because they were trying to be more faithful to the comic book and trying to actually tell an interesting story it wasn't necessarily the greatest but still uh, i have to admit the movie was successful and the movie was okay so there you go. I mean, try to take that as an example where you can go further back, uh, look at Blade, uh, how that was. I'm talking the original Blade. That was a popular movie. It was really successful. Uh, no one cared that he was a black character. And if you make a Blade reboot like they're doing, I think people would be more upset if you raced and swapped him and made him a white guy because it's like, well, that's not sticking to the comic book. So I don't know what you're doing with that. I personally wouldn't be interested in that. But also, I'm not really interested in the upcoming Blade movie from what I heard, which is kind of a shame because uh Mahersha Ali is a good actor and I think he could play the role good well but I don't know I'm just not getting the uh, warm and fuzzies uh from hearing the news from behind the scenes but yeah I know that's just me but when it comes to the Marvel movies let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below do you think they're ever going to learn their lesson and kind of correct course or do you think they're just going to keep doubling and tripling down until they essentially run out of money to produce these uh, I tend to side more towards the latter until something dramatically changes at the studio that I don't see happening unless maybe the board changes up at the Marvel and Disney, but I don't know. That's maybe wishful thinking, but comment below and let me know what you think. And also if you haven't already click that subscribe button, if you want to stay up to date with the latest entertainment news, and if you can like and share the video because it really helps out with the channel. Thank you.